Welcome back, everyone. Well, in Bloomington, a big attraction is making a comeback on the Indiana University campus after being under construction for two and a half years. That's right. The Eskenazi Museum of Art is back after a $30 million renovation, and leaders of the museum say it's better than ever. Our Randall Newsom has more. Hey guys, we're here giving you a brand new look here at IU Bloomington at the Eskenazi Museum of Art. We're here joined by David Brenham, who's our, our special tour guide. <laughs> so for you, uh, we are in a very special room right now. Can you yeah. tell us about this? Yeah, this is our new art conservation center. Mm -hmm. And uh, some people think of this kind of a, a studio or this kind of a laboratory as almost like an art hospital. Uh -huh. So it's a place where, where works of art that um, maybe have been injured, mm -hmm. uh, they come and they get, um, you know, kind of the surgeon looks at them and fixes them up. Um, but it's also a place, but it's really a place where we learn about the works of art in our collection. Awesome. And this is kind of where some of that money was put to kind of enhance you guys' technology, That's right? right? That's right. Well, as a university, um, we have a teaching mission, and we're here to, to both learn about the works of art that we have, but we're also here to, to show students um, how uh, works of art are made, mm -hmm. um, how uh, to treat works of art, and so uh, we have a great professional staff. You know, this technology that you guys are working with, kind of tell me what this sure. does. It looks so cool. All right, so this is our um, Hyrox 3D digital microscope, and basically what I'm using this for is to do an in-depth examination of the painting without taking any sort of samples or any sort of destructive analysis. Okay. So right here on the screen you can see we actually have a loss to the paint that I'm going to put in fo out of focus slightly and what I'm going to do is be able to take a 3D map of this loss to the paint. So a little bit out of focus we can check and then I have to execute this photo and it's taking 14 photographs of this exact same space wow. in the Z direction, okay. so we're taking a 3D map of this loss of paint. So you have this really great image to be able to tell that there are multiple layers of paint. You can see this is the original canvas underneath. So because of this small loss to the paint that's about the size of a pinhead, we can learn so much about how this painting was made wow. and therefore how to treat it to make it ready for exhibition. Wow. Two and a half years since this place has been open to everyone. Mm -hmm. On Thursday, what are you looking forward to when people come in these doors again for the first time? I'm really excited to see so many people in the museum again. It's been really interesting. I mean, I've only been here for about seven months, and so all I've been seeing are my coworkers' faces for the past seven months. And so mm -hmm. to be able to see visitors come in, students, other faculty members, I think that'll really be great. And from what I understand, it's such a change from what the museum used to look like. Mm -hmm. So I'm really just excited for everyone else to be able to experience it too. Awesome, right, guys, I'm excited too. Um, students, eat your heart out. I was the first one to get the <laughs> VIP inside look. I'm here with my art doctor, Julia Rivets, And hey, I'm, I'm looking forward to this event. You guys should too. Thursday, it opens up. It'll be open all weekend. So I'll send it back to you guys. All right, very neat. Randall, thank you. Again, it's completely free to visit the museum and see all the new things that they have to offer. You can click on Randall's story at wishtv.org.